So go ahead and get your yarn, the same color that you had for the head, and you're going to take and fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, and then hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then just cinch the loop around the crochet hook. We're going to start making chains. We're going to make a chain of 71, but I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 71, and then come back. After you finish your chain of 71, then you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go into the second chain from the hook, and you're going to bring up a loop, then complete a, si a single crochet. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a single crochet. Then you're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet into every stitch back across. And that should give you a stitch, a stitch count of 70 for the row. So this is our starting chain, and then this is our first row. Then, when you finish your last single crochet, you should have a stitch count of 70 after completing that first row. So I'm not counting the starting chain as the first row. So we just completed the first row. Then you're just going to make a chain of one, and then turn your work and we're going to start the second row. So you're not going to make a single crochet into the base stitch of that chain one that you made. You're going to go into the next stitch over and then make a single crochet. So you take your crochet hook, go into that next stitch over, bring up a loop, and then just make a single crochet. And then you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across for the second row. So now I just finished my second row. Then to move up to the next row you just repeat the same thing. You just chain one and then turn your work and then make a single crochet into the next stitch over. And you're going to keep repeating this until you've completed a total of 24 rows. So go ahead, finish completing a total of 24 rows, and then come back. You should have your three panels for the body. So here's the bottom panel, and then you have the two side panels. And then I'm just going to measure them for you if you're going to be using a different yarn. So this one measures approximately 17. 17 inches by five and a half inches. Then you can set the three panels aside. We're going to make the top panel now. The top panel is made the exact same way as the bottom panel and two side panels. Except for the top panel, you're going to start with a chain of 51. So start with a chain of 51, and then you make it the exact same way. You still want a total of 24 roll, rows. And the measurement for the top panel is approximately 12 inches by 5 and a half inches. Then go ahead and set the top panel aside, and then you're going to want to make the front and the back panel. So you need two of them, one for the front and one for the back. 
This panel is started with a chain of 25. So you start with a chain of 25 and then you make it the exact same way. You want 24 rows before you finish off. And the measurement for the front and the back panels is approximately 6 inches. And again, it's approximately 5.5 inches for the length. And then you need two of these. Then you're just going to take the top panel and the front and the back panel, set those aside. You want the three larger panels for the bottom and the two sides. We're going to sew them together to form the bottom and the two sides of the body. So go ahead and get the same colored yarn on your tapestry needle. And then you could set one panel aside for now. And you're going to take and fold one of the panels on top of the other panel so that you have the right sides together. So whatever side that you want showing on the outside of the body, those are going to be together. So the right sides are together and I have the wrong side facing up. Then I'm going to take and I have two loose yarn ends on one side. So I'm going to go ahead and tie those together into a knot. And then I'm going to take my tapestry needle. I'm going to go into both panels. Someone had asked me if you could just make one long row for the body and the two side panels. And you can do it that way too. I just prefer to do it this way. So whatever way that you want to do it, that would be fine. I just prefer it this way. Then just take and sew across. Just go through both panels, just that top stitch. And you're going to sew the panels together. So on the wrong side, you're going to be creating a little ridge. So when you're sewing these panels together, you want to make sure that you have the right side without the ridge. So the ridge will only be on the wrong side as you sew. So go ahead, finish sewing these two panels together. So now I just finished sewing two panels together and you can see how you have a nice even seam on the right side. But the wrong side you create a little bit of a ridge. So make sure that as you're sewing the body together that you keep the ridge on the wrong side. So now we're going to get the other portion, the other panel, side panel, and we're going to line it up. So here you can see that the ridge is on this side, so I want to make sure that I keep the ridge on the same side. So now I have the right sides together. So you can see how I have the even seam here and I'm going to create the even seam on that side so the right sides are together. And then I'm going to take, make sure that you have the side that you want showing. And then I'm just going to take and tie a knot with my loose yarn ends. And then I'm just going to flip it. So here I have the wrong side facing up with the ridge on the other side. And I'm going to take and sew the other side of the panel in place. The exact same way. Not. And then you just take and sew the other panel in place the exact same way. So then you have your body, your bottom of the body, and the two side panels in place. 
So I just finished sewing across the panel, sewing it in place, and now I'm just going to tie a knot, just so you can see how I tied my knot on the end. And then I like to go through twice. And then you just cut, leaving a loose yarn end. Then you have the bottom and the two side panels together. So here you can see how I have the ridge on the wrong side. Both ridges are on the wrong side. And then when I flip it over to the right side, you see how you have a nice clean edge for the body, which is what you want. So now you have one large panel that has the bottom and the two sides sewn in place. Now we're going to sew the top panel in place. So you want to take your bottom and two side panels and flip it over so that the right side is facing you. And then you're going to take the top panel, make sure that you have the right side. So here I have a little bit of a flaw on the wrong side, so I'm going to make sure that I have the right sides together. So the side that I want showing, I'm going to have lying on. So this is the side I want showing. So that's the right side will be on the right side. Then you're going to line it up all the way over so that the right side is lined up with the right side of the top panel. Then you just take the same colored yarn and your tapestry needle and you take and sew the two edges together just like you did before. And again, make sure that you have the right sides together because you don't want the ridge showing on the wrong side. You want the ridge on the wrong side. So now I've sewed the top panel on one of the side panels. Then you're just going to take and pull it and line it up with the opposite side panel. So I still have the right sides together. So the even nice seam will be on the right side and then I have the ridges on the wrong side. And then I have the same colored yarn, and I'm going to sew the side panel on the opposite side to the top panel. And again, you want to make sure that your ridge is on the wrong side. You don't want your ridge to show on the right side. And then you just sew the opposite side, the top panel, onto the opposite side. Now you have the top panel sewed on, so you can see how you have the bottom, the two sides, and the top panel. Now we're going to put the front and the back portion, sew the front and the back portion on. So I'm going to work on the back portion first. So you just take your back panel, and again I have the wrong side facing up with the ridges. And I'm just going to line up, make sure that you have the right side of the panel that you want showing on the outside of the body facing the inside or the right side. So here's the wrong side facing me. So the side that you want inside the body where nobody will see will be facing you. Then just line up the square panel with the back of the body and you're going to take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn and then you're just going to sew the panel in place all around, all around the sides and the top and the bottom and just sew it in place. So you just go in and out, just grabbing a stitch on that top panel and the back panel 
and you're going to sew it all the way around. So this is what mine looks like after sewing the back panel in place. Then I'm just going to go to the front. So here I have the front and I still have the wrong side facing me. So that the inside is the right side. Then I'm going to take the front panel and again you want the right side of the front panel. So here I have a little bit of a flaw so I want to make sure that faces the wrong side. And then I have the right side facing in. And then also make sure that your lines are all horizontal. So I guess it doesn't really matter if you put it the other way, but I just keep all of the lines facing the same direction. So they're horizontal here, horizontal here. I have the right side facing in towards the right side of the body. And then the wrong side is facing me. And then I'm just going to take and tie a knot with one of the loose yarn ends in the corner. Then I'm going to take my tapestry needle and I'm going to start in this top corner. And then you can turn your work to if you need to. And then you're just going to sew the front panel in place. I have a little knot in my yarn. Let's see if I can bring that through. Okay, so I was able to bring that through. And then you just keep sewing the panel together. So you can see how you're creating a little box for the neck. The right side's on the inside and the wrong side is facing me and I'm just taking and sewing the panels together. So the front panel to the side panel and the bottom panel and then the other side. So then I have all of the panels sewn together. Now I can turn the work inside out so that the right side of the body is facing me. And then you can see how there's no ridges on the right side. You have the nice even seams where you sewed all of the panels together. And that way you know you made it correctly. And then you're ready to start forming the neck. So now that you have the right side facing you, we're going to start forming the neck of the dog. So you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go right into the corner. So now you just take your yarn and join it in one of the corners. Just chain one and then just tie a knot. And then place your yarn marker so you can keep track of the stitch count as well as the rounds. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around until you get back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into every stitch around. So I finished one single crochet in every stitch around. And you're going to vary as far as stitch count when you're finished because the stitches aren't one to one in the round. So I want to finish with 76 stitches and that first round I had 12 stitches over the 76. So I actually had the 76 so I had 88 stitches. So I want to make 12 stitches in the round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to single crochet two stitches together 12 times so that I'll end up on the next round with a 76 stitch count. So I'm going to evenly space them around. So I'm going to make one on each of the corners. So that'll be four single crochet two stitches together. And then I'm going to make two of them evenly spaced in each segment. So that'll give me two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And that'll bring me down to a stitch count of 76. 
So I'm going to leave my yarn marker where I have it because I know I've already finished one round. So I'm going to make one single crochet a few stitches in and then I'm just going to evenly space the two single crochet stitches in this segment before I get to the first corner. So I'm going to make my first one now. So to make a single crochet two stitches together you just go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a single crochet two stitches together. Then you just make one single crochet into a couple stitches and then I want to make one more single crochet two stitches together. And then I'm just going to do this for each segment because I want to bring the stitch count down to 76. Then I'm going to make one single crochet in every stitch to the first corner. So I have my first corner and I'm going to single crochet two stitches together. So if you have under a stitch count of 76 then you would add stitches for this round. So to add stitches, which I'm not doing, but I'll show you for yours, to add a stitch you would just make two single crochet into the same stitch and then you would scatter how many stitches that you need evenly spaced around the opening of the neck. So again, I'm not adding stitches. I'm taking away stitches. So I'm going to take that one out on mine. So I have only one single crochet and then I'm going to make one single crochet a few stitches in and then I'm going to single crochet two stitches together and then one single crochet a few stitches in and then single crochet two stitches together and I'm going to repeat this all the way around back to my yarn marker. So now I have 76 stitch counts in the round. So remember to add stitches in your count you put two single crochet into the same stitch and then evenly space them around. If you want to take away a stitch in your stitch count then you single crochet two stitches together like I did and evenly space them in the round. So now I have 76 stitches in the round. So far I've completed three rounds. I want a total of nine rounds. So go ahead, finish. Once you have your stitch count to 76, just make one single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of nine rounds. So nine rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around for a total stitch count of 76. After you finish your nine rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around, then you can go ahead and move the yarn marker up and we're going to make a decrease round, which means we're going to decrease the number of stitches in the round. So for the first decrease round, you're just going to make one single crochet into eight stitches And then you're going to make your decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together. So you just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three loops for a decrease stitch. Then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into eight stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. Then just put one single crochet into each of the six remaining stitches. You should have a total of 69 stitches in the round. Then just take and move the yarn marker up and you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch around 
for a total of three rounds. So three rounds of just one single crochet into each stitch around. After you finish your three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, then you can go ahead and get your craft stuffing and just stuff the body of the dog. And don't worry if you don't get stuffing completely in the neck area. Just stuff to, to the bottom of the neck and leave the neck portion open for now. Especially if you're using the tube with the wire to help support the head more. So now we're going to go ahead and make our next round. So go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up to where you left off. And for this decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into seven stitches. After you make one single crochet into seven stitches, you're going to single crochet two stitches together or make your decrease stitch. So go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. Go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decrease stitch. And then go ahead and repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Again, you're going to make one single crochet into each of the six remaining stitches. Your stitch count should be a total of 62 in the round. Then you're just going to take and move your yarn marker up and you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch around for a total of three rounds. So three rounds of just one single crochet in every stitch around. After you finish your three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, go ahead and move your yarn marker up. We're going to make another decrease round. So for this decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into six stitches. And then make your decrease stitch. Just go into the next stitch, bring up a loop. Go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decrease stitch. And then just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning. Then when you reach the yarn marker, you would have made one single crochet into six stitches. Go ahead and make your last stitch a decrease stitch, even though you're going to pass the yarn marker. So you're going to end the round with a decrease stitch. That will give you a total of 54 stitches in the round. Then go ahead and move the yarn marker up. And now you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 11 rounds. So 11 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So this is what my neck looks like so far. I just finished my 11 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch in the round. And here's the opening for the neck. And you can see the stuffing is just in the body portion. And I'll stuff the neck later once I'm finished. So now we're going to place our stitch markers. You can go ahead and remove the yarn marker. So the stitch markers that I like to use are these adorable little stitch markers. These have little Yorkie dogs on them and they have this little clasp that you can open. And then there's also a larger clasp that you can just open up to remove your stitch markers. and it just keeps them in one place. So if you want to see where I buy my stitch markers, just go to my handmade business, small businesses, and I list them there. If you have a hard time finding it on my blog at www.helenmaycrochet.com, 
just contact me on my blog. At the top of my home page you'll see contact and you can contact me and I'll give you the link. But again, this is my blog post, Small Business Handmade, where I get these. So I'm just going to use these to mark where I'm going to count and start around the neck. So the first thing I'm going to do is just find the front. So this is the front of the body and I'm just going to fold the neck so that I have the very front portion or front center of the neck. And then once I find that, I'm going to take one of my clasps and then I'm just going to place it right into the stitch, right in the front. And then that's going to serve as my landmark to count and place the other two stitches. After you place your stitch markers, so I have one in the front, and then I counted, not counting that front stitch marker, count 15 stitches and place the second marker in the 15th stitch, and then count to the left, count without counting that first stitch marker, count um, 14 stitches, and then place the third stitch marker into the 14th stitch. Then just take and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook, then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury your work. And then just cinch that knot down. Now you're just going to take and join your yarn, the same colored yarn. This is the front center stitch marker. So in my second stitch marker, I went ahead and removed it. But in that same stitch, I'm joining the same colored yarn in the back of the neck. So I'm just going to take and tie a knot. Again, this is where I placed the second stitch marker. Then you're just going to chain one. Then you're just going to turn your work and this first chain one counts as your first stitch. You're going to go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet into a total of 24 stitches. So that was my second. Or actually, you're going to make one single crochet into each stitch including that last stitch marker. So one single crochet, so this is my third, and then just make one single crochet into each stitch across the back of the neck, and then you're going to finish in the third stitch marker spot. So for mine, I made one single crochet across the back, and I had a total of 26 stitches across the back of the neck. After you finish your last stitch across the back of the neck, and again I have 26 total stitches so far, go ahead and turn your work. You're not going to chain one. You're just going to turn your work, and then you're going to go into the next stitch over. So go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet and then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across the back of the neck except for the last stitch. Leave the last stitch unworked and then come back. So now count the number of stitches across the back of the neck and leave a total count of 23 stitches. So skip the one or two stitches on that last portion of the back of the neck until you have a total of 23 stitches along the back of the neck. Then you're just going to turn your work. And then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch.
and then you're going to make one single crochet into each of the stitches back across the back of the neck and then stop when you have a total of 21 stitches across the back of the neck. Then you're going to turn your work and this is going to be our last row on the back of the neck and you'll see how you're raising up the back portion of the neck and what that does is it helps to tilt the head forward which is what we want. So here now I'm going back across the back of the neck so again, I'm not chaining one, I just turned my work, and then I'm going to go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet, and then again, you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch, and every stitch back across to get a total. When you come back, I'll give you the total of stitches across the back of the neck on this last row. So for mine, I have a total of 19 stitches across the back on this last row. Then I'm going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to help sew the head onto the neck. So this part is optional. I just like to use this tubing and the wire to give the head a little bit more strength. But this is um, one half inch inner diameter and five eighths of an inch outer diameter for this tubing. And I'm going to measure 12 inches. Then once you measure your 12 inches, then you can just take your scissors and you can just take and cut it that easy for the length that you want. Then you just get whatever craft wire that you're using. I mean using Doris wired accents, the 12 gauge aluminum floral wire. And I'm just going to cut 30 inches, approximately 30 inches of this wire. And again this wire cuts easily with a pair of scissors. So now I have my wire, I folded it in half and then I just measured the tubing because the tubing is going to go over this coiled wire. So I want to make sure that the part where I coil it reaches the end of the tube. So I just kind of bent the ends where I'm planning on coiling it over on itself. And then I'm going to take the dog's head and then underneath the dog's head, this is where I'm going to insert the craft wire. So right underneath, I'm just going to take and go under the dog's head with the wire. And I'm just going to go over about four stitches and then come out. So here I have one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So I came out after the fifth stitch. And you're just going to bring the wire through. So here you can see that's the halfway point for my wire. Then I'm just going to take the end and make sure that you have the tubing will cover where you want the tubing to cover and then I'm just going to coil at that point. So I'm just going to extend mine a little bit more and I'm going to start coiling at about this point. So I'm just coiling it over on itself. And then I'm just going to double check make sure that the tubing will cover, which it will. 
See how the tubing will cover the coiled portion of the wire. And then you can go ahead and take your tubing and then just put it right over the coiled wire. And this is what it will look like when you're finished. So you can see how you have the tubing right up to the coiled wire and then it completely covers the coiled wire. And it just adds a little rigidity holding the neck up and the head up on the neck of the dog. Now you can take and push the tubing down into the body and the neck and you're going to stuff, put craft stuffing around the tubing. So this is what mine looks like after completely stuffing the neck all around the tubing. So make sure you have plenty of stuffing in the neck before you start sewing the head in place. Now you're going to sew the neck and the head together. You want to make sure that you have your head lined up so that the front face is looking forward. Make sure that the head's not crooked as you're sewing. So you want to make sure it's facing forward. There's a slight tilt to the head and you're just going to line up the back of the head with the back of the neck. So here you can see how I'm starting with the neck and going into the head, maintaining the front of the head so that it's looking forward. And then you can see how after I went through the head, I'm going to go back through the neck. Don't worry if you have wide stitches for the first round because the first round is just to stabilize the head and then you can make multiple rounds to secure the head to the neck. This is what my crochet dog's head looks like after sewing it in place. Here's the back of the head. You can see that the front of the head is facing forward. And then the other side of the head. And it's looking good. Now I'm going to show you how to make the ears. We're going to make two of them. And you're going to start with the same colored yarn. You're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Go through the loop with your crochet hook. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around the crochet hook. Then we're going to make a chain of 15. I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 15 and then come back. After you finish your chain of 15, you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So just bring up a loop and then finish your single crochet. And then you're going to go into the next stitch And then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across. So one single crochet into every stitch back across. And then you should have a stitch count of 14. Then when you reach the end, go ahead and chain one and then turn your work. That first chain one counts as your first stitch for the next row. Take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, make a single crochet, and then you're just going to repeat one single crochet into every stitch back across. So, so far we have our starting chain and then we had our first row 
And then we just finished our second row. And now you're just going to keep repeating the same thing. You're going to make a chain one, turn your work, and then that first chain one will count as your first stitch. You're going to go into the next stitch over and make your single crochet. So each row that you complete will have a stitch count of 14. So go ahead and make 10 more rows. So not counting the rows that we finished, you're going to count the row that you're starting now and you're going to keep chaining one and turning your work and making one single crochet in every stitch so that each row has a stitch count of 14. And so this one will count as your first row and you're going to make nine more for a total of 10. So 10 rows that you're going to make with a stitch count of 14 and then come back. Then this is how my work looks so far. Then I'm just going to take, after I finish my last stitch, you're not going to chain one. You're just going to turn your work and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over and then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch across except for the last stitch. Leave the last remaining stitch unworked and then come back. So now you should have a total of 12 stitches after that last row. I skipped the last stitch we're going to repeat this two more times. Go ahead and turn your work, so no chain one. You're going to go into the next stitch over, make a single crochet, and you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch across except for the last stitch, and the stitch count for this row will be 10 stitches. So this is what my work looks like so far. Then I skip that last stitch. I have 10 stitches in that row. I'm going to turn my work. I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over. And you're going to, this is our last row. You're going to make one single crochet into the next stitch and every stitch across except for the last stitch. And you'll finish this row with a total of eight. I'm just going to work it with you. So I have four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch over. And then go ahead and finish off. And just leave enough yarn to bury into your work. So we finished one ear. You're going to make the other ear the exact same way. And then when you're finished with your ear, you're going to get your tapestry needle and just put it onto your loose yarn end or any loose yarn ends. And then decide which side of the ear you want for the right side. For mine it doesn't matter, each side looks the same. So I'm just going to take on the wrong side and just weave the loose yarn end through the work. and then just trim it. So go ahead and make both ears and bury your loose yarn ends on both ears and then come back. Okay, so now after you finish your both of your ears, we're going to have the fun part of putting the hair on the dog. So you're going to get your Lion Brand Homespun Thick and Quick. And again, the color that I'm using is Dove. So the first thing you're going to want to do is just get a bunch of yarn onto your tapestry needle or darning needle and you're going to line up your ear. You're not going to sew it on the dog yet. You're just going to get an idea of the length that you want for your hair. So for my ears, I lined it up so that I'm three rows in line with the eyelashes. So just use an imaginary line from the eyelashes 
and count three rows up and that's where your top edge of the ear is going to lie and that's where you're going to sew it. So you're going to take and measure from the bottom of the ear and I made my loops of hair go all the way down to the end of the body. So you can trim it later so this is where you want to make your length however long that you want for the hair on the ears. So for the first part we're going to be putting the hair along the bottom of the ear. So I went about where here's the bottom curve of the ear so I went right where the curve starts and then I just take my tapestry, tapestry needle and just go through with my yarn and then you're going to stop when you have the length that you want so I made I put a lot of yarn onto my tapestry needle and then once you get to where you think your length is going to be and I'll just double check by putting my ear back in line where it's going to fall on the dog and just kind of measure the length that I want the hair to be. So I'm going to pull it a little bit shorter. And then once I'm happy with the length, then you'll know how long you'll want to make your hair on the ear. So I'm just going to measure it real quick so you'll get an idea of what mine was. So mine is approximately 13 inches. So about 13 inches in length. And then I'm going to make the second loop. So you just take your tapestry needle and then you're going to go into the next stitch over and I'm just going to stay on that row and you're just going to bring the yarn through until you have the loop that's the exact same length as your initial yarn end. So then once you have the loop size that you want, that's the size that you're going to maintain all the way across. So you just go over the next stitch over and then just keep making loops, all of them the same length, and then come back. So when you reach the end of the yarn that you put onto your tapestry needle and you don't have enough to reach the length that you want, just put any excess into a Ziploc bag. So you can always use it for stuffing for in the legs later because you're going to have stuffing when you comb out the hair. You're going to have excess soft fluffy stuffing that you can save to use later so nothing gets wasted. And then you can see that I still need more hair so this is my last end and with the last end you're going to want to tie a knot and then you're just going to get some more yarn on your tapestry needle and then just resume making your loops. Then, for the first loop that you're making, when you're starting again, you always tie the knot again with that first strand, and then just resume making your loops. I just wanted to show you that if you're making your loops and it gets bunched up, just pull on the excess bunched up area and just keep pulling through until you get the length that you want. Now after you finish the whole row and you have all of your loops made, then you're going to go back to the start of the row and you're going to take each individual loop and just cut it in half 
and then tie a knot until all of the loops have been cut and you've tied knots and then just push them to the side so just grab each loop make sure you cut them in half to keep the length and keep the lengths even and then just tie a knot the other ear is going to be made this, the exact same way then after you've finished cutting all of your loops you're going to be ready to brush out the hair so then you can take your dog brush and again this is the one that I'm using and then you just take a hard surface, a book, or you're not going to want something that you could potentially scratch. So then once you find that surface, then you just take and hold the top portion of the hair. And then I usually start at the bottom, and then I just gently brush out the hair. So I'm just making it so it's fluffy and cottony and then I just gently work my way up towards the top where I tied the knots at the top and then you just brush out the loops making the hair look cottony until you have the look that you want and then any excess that you remove then you can take and place that into your Ziploc bag so it's not wasted and then you just continue brushing it out until you're happy with the look. So that's how I did mine. So after I do that, then you're going to take and you're going to move up to a higher row to put some more loops. So I left the top four rows unworked. And then I'm going to make some more loops along this row. So again, I just start on the end. And then make the loops. And I'm making the loops. You don't have to make them go the full length of your first one you can make them go a little bit shorter because it will overlap over the other portion of the ear so I think that's a pretty good length I'll keep that length and then that length for mine is 11 inches so I'm making about 11 inches for the top row So then you can see how I made the loops for that top row and you're going to take and cut each individual loop just like you did for the bottom row. So I'm going to start on the end. Make sure I cut the loop in half so that it's even. And then just take and tie a knot for each loop. Then after you finish putting the top row and cutting each of the loops I, I hold it off to the side and then this is the bottom part that we already brushed and then I put this on the opposite side and just brush that side of it out just like I did for the bottom portion This is what my finished ear looks like after I'm finished brushing it out. Now it's ready to be sewn on to your dog. Just get the same colored yarn as your dog and put it onto your tapestry needle. And then you're just going to take the dog and you're going to line up the ear on the dog. So again, you want the ear to line up so that it's in line with the eyelash and you want it three rows up so just make sure that it's straight the way that you want it and you can hold it up 
and make sure that it's straight in the way that you want the ear to look. And then once you're happy with the placement, so mine is, I would say it's more in line with the tip of the black portion. So using the tapestry needle as an imaginary line, that's about how I placed mine and it's about three rows up from the black portion, the glitter portion of the eye. And then once you're happy with the placement, you can take, I'm going to start from the op opposite side so that the knot will be in the back. going to bring this in view for you. So here you can see how I'm coming from the other direction. I'm just checking to make sure I still have it lined up. And then just leave a loose yarn end for burying into your work. And then just go a stitch over and go back towards the back of the ear so you can tie a knot. And then you just finish sewing only the top portion of the ear because you want to have a flap so that the ear will lift up. And then just sew it across the top of the ear. And this is what mine looks like after sewing it in place. You're going to sew the other ear on and make the other ear the exact same way. This is what her ear looks like. Mm -hmm.